Hey guys and welcome to The Broken Sword. In today's video we are going to try and figure out the true strength of Gondor's armies during the War of the Ring. This was not the easiest task as Tolkien didn't write a great detail about military structure in his universe, but we can certainly figure it out based upon certain pieces of information. The majority of information here comes from the return of the king, as of course that is the part of the story that Gondor's armies are most heavily utilised. Let's get into it. Build me an army worthy of So before we get too far into the video, I want to take this opportunity to announce something that some of you may already know and some of you may not really care about, but we do have another channel, the Tabletop Alliance, where we play lots of Middle Earth strategy battle game. Tabletop gaming may not be for all of you, but for those of you that are interested, we've actually built a brand new studio just for that channel. So we will be having regular battle reports on there that you can check out if you're interested in that sort of thing. Our aim is genuinely to try and produce the highest quality battle report content on YouTube. The changes that we've made to the studio hopefully will allow us to do that, provide you guys with not only entertaining, but also super high quality and cinematic reports. I am super excited and I hope at least some of you are as well. Anyway, back to the video. Now the first line we must pay attention to from The Return of the King is when Burgil says to Pippin, The captains of the Outlands are expected up the south road ere sundown. The reason this is important is because being called captains of the Outlands means that there are military commanders with some sort of authority over a certain area. This was most likely a position that was given to them by the steward of Gondor. Forlong, men shouted, true heart, true friend, Forlong. But when the men of Lossanark had passed, they muttered, so few, two hundreds, what are they? We hoped for ten times that number. That will be the new tidings of the Black Fleet. They are sparing only a tenth of their strength. Still, every little is a gain. So from this passage of the first chapter of Return of the King, we can see that the men of Lossanark brought two hundred men to help Minas Tirith a number that is considered to be a tenth of its full strength. So from this we can work out that there were roughly 2,000 fighting men from Lossanark in total. Of course it makes sense that they would not send their full armies, as their own lands would of course need protecting as well, even if it's just as a sort of precaution for their safety. Continuing forward then in the same chapter of Return of the King, we get an idea of the numbers brought forward by other captains. Prince Imrahil brought 700 knights of Dolamroth, Devorin brought 300 men on foot from the Ring's Vale. Dwin here brought 500 archers from the Blackroot Vale, and Herluin the Fear of the Green Hills from Pinath Gelin was said to have brought 300 gallant green clad men. We should also point out that it is mentioned that a few men were sent from Lamdon without a captain, and also men from the Anvalas came to the battle, but the numbers are not mentioned. I would assume that it's somewhere between 1 and 400 per district. So, to make things easier, we will call this a total of 2,500 troops that have come to the aid of Minas Tirith. Though this tells us very little of the total number of the actual force that could have been available. However, we can work out that the areas closest to the coast would have sent less men due to the threat of the Black Fleet. Let us assume that this all matches the amount that came from Lossanak, a tenth. So we can guess that areas that are further inland could have afforded more men, let's say a fifth. The total forces would have looked more like this. 2,000 men from Lossanak, 3,000 from Ringo Vale, 5,000 from the Blackroot Vale of Morthond, 3,000 from Amphalas, 500 from Lamadon, 1,500 from Pinath Gelin, and 7,000 from Dalamroth. So this number totals around 22,000 men. However, this does not include the original force from Minas Tirith and the garrisons from Osgiliath and Kaya Andros. This is where it might get a little confusing, or at least a little more confusing. Most estimates on the size of the Minas Tirith army is somewhere between 2 and 3,000, but it's unclear if the forces at Osgiliath were taken out of that number or if they are a separate garrison altogether. To be safe, we will use the higher number and assume it totals 3,000. So all added together at absolute full strength, we can assume that Gondor's army could have totaled 25,000 strong. All of these numbers are of course based upon Gondor's armies during the War of the Ring, which are extremely weakened when compared to a time of its greatest strength. Now if you guys enjoy this video, perhaps we could try and do another one on Gondor's army during its absolute prime. 
It seems that Sauron was aware of the structure of Gondor's armies, which is why he sent the Corsairs of Umbar. Not really to reinforce the attack on Minas Tirith, as he had enough orcs there, but to tie up all of Gondor's coastal forces and prevent them from aiding Minas Tirith at full strength. Weakening Gondor's defence was surely a more effective tactic than strengthening his already huge army. Now, I really apologise if this video was a little confusing, and of course do not take these numbers to be exact, as they are all educated and researched estimations. I see lots of numbers being thrown about when talking about armies in Middle-earth. Some seem accurate and some seem way off. We've even got numbers wrong in the past on our previous channel, but of course when Tolkien does not give the exact numbers, all we can do is use the information that is available to us to make our best guess. So my question for you guys today is this. If you could have been a part of any of the defensive forces involved in the Siege of Minas Tirith, who would you pick? This of course includes the later reinforcements from Rohan and those that came along with Aragorn. Let us know in the comments down below, it's a tough choice. Okay, time has come as always to thank our patrons and channel members, your support means the absolute world to us. I say it very regularly on the channel and it seems like progress is super slow, but the money on Patreon is still going towards the budget of our project and we are still looking to get ahead with production this year. Fingers crossed for us. And again, don't forget, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the Tabletop Alliance is making a resurgence with a brand new studio. So go and check out that channel. And if you have any interest in tabletop gaming, specifically Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's it from me today, my friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword. Build me a worthy of Mordor.